Hey and welcome back to episode 18 of Make Gears Great Again. In this episode I'll explain to you what skills and techniques can do to help you in your Gears of War experience. So skills and techniques, aren't they the same things? No, they are not. Skills are like tools and techniques are how you use them. Gears of War's arsenal of skills is very broad, ranging from movement to shooting to communications and many more. Depending on your level of commitment to the game, you could master all of these at once, but it's not without struggles. Now let's start with skills and movement. Movement will separate the men from the boys in Gears of War. Speed and wall bouncing can be great, but it's completely optional. What matters most is consistency and unpredictability. The better you are at outpacing or simply outmaneuvering your enemy, the less effort it costs to be in battle. Depending what Gears of War you're playing, you can witness many different styles of movement. But most players keep it to a simple one-two touch with the walls, meaning they're often wall bouncing near edges of cover or longer corridors, simply to gain speed and momentum. Wall bouncing isn't just used for combat, it's also very useful to quickly traverse around the map and beat your enemy to certain positions. Knowing when and where and how to wall bounce can make a huge difference in your predictability and map knowledge. For example, if you're on a map with a large outdoor area and small corridors on the inside areas, then you'll find most CQC players inside because it's their preferred ground to fight at, often waiting near corners to catch unsuspecting players off guard. But if you're an experienced agile player, you can maneuver in ways that lure these enemies out. That way you can engage them or back away if you notice that you're in an unwinnable fight. Another thing that's been changed over the years is the reaction to movement based players. Many players that are uncomfortable playing this way often start walking backwards and this also happens when they've been hurt. Although this can work, it keeps you in a very passive position. It can be effective in corridors and doorways but overall fails once you have someone ahead of you that knows what you're doing. The last thing you'd always want to do is telegraph your movement, meaning you start turning or rolling away from the enemy's direction and causing you to have no idea what they're going to do. This must be used as a last resort. Aggression can be key here. Do not be afraid to get into their way and pull out your own moves whenever and wherever, especially when you're actually getting hurt. The skills in Gears of War are most often regarded as your game knowledge, the control over your character and shooting under pressure. So let's take shooting for this example, seeing different ideas of game knowledge have been beat to death in the other videos already. Landing shots is important, but when is it most important? For the solo players among you, I would suggest you learn how to get comfortable in multiple angled fights, meaning there could be enemies above you, to your sides and front at the same time. Work on surviving longer than before. One-on-one -on -one situations happen a lot, but in general, if you know how to take on multiple foes without dying right away, you'll be even more comfortable fighting one opponent. Timing is crucial with shooting. Knowing when and where to fire can make any fight turn into your favor. Also knowing what type of shot to use can often save your life, landing you quick kills or ending your life before you even land a shot. The Lancer, Shotgun and Snub Pistol are your usual starting weapons, so treat these like an extension of your character, because they are the most useful weapons in the game. Now it's time to talk about techniques, or the way you do the things. First off, with the Xbox controller there are certain ways to play, and many players hold it the regular way, but there is another way, one that is tricky to start learning but can greatly enhance your skill with anything explosive and agility. This method is called Claw. By using the claw method, you hold your index finger on the A button, while you hold your thumb on the right thumbstick. What this allows you to do is move and shoot at the same time. In the beginning, you'll be absolutely terrible at even holding the controller right, let alone firing. But with at least a good 20 to 30 hours, you will start noticing difference quickly. For many, this is the preferred way to play Gears of War when it comes to shotgun fights. However, you don't have to play this way, of course. But because these are my suggestions, I recommend you give it a try for at least 2-3 to three weeks. There are a lot of people who can have different opinions on its benefits, and that's fine. I'm just here to share my experience with you and those others like myself. The learning of different shooting techniques like pop shotting, zoomers, hard aims, up A's, back A's, etc. is crucial to figure out the ways others play against yourself. If you know the extent of something perfectly by mastering it yourself, 
then you can also find out how to perfectly counteract something. Combinations of all are crucial. And once you've witnessed it all under fuck knows how many fights, you'll learn how to recognize and win fights before they're even fought. That's the level you'd want to aim for when learning these skills and techniques. To be the absolute best at it that you can be. To be the absolute best you can be at something. Remember to understand that it's your decision how far you take it. And nothing should be more rewarding to you than finally being able to do the thing you've been working towards and having fun along the way. So that's it for this episode. I hope it's been helpful and you learned a thing or two. Let me know in the comments which skill or technique is the hardest to learn for you. And maybe if I have a... Let me know in the comments below if there is a skill or technique that you have a lot of trouble learning. And maybe I can help you out that way. Thank you for watching. Until next time.